You're going to be performing the classics. Yeah, we are going to do... Uh, obviously, you have to do those songs. Those songs are a gift. Oh, yes. Yeah. You know, in a live show, obviously. Yeah. Um, you know, Karma Chameleon is a song you do last so that no-one leaves. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. It's a little trick. You go like, we're going to do that song, but you're going to have to wait. Yeah, okay. yeah. So good if you're tactic. one of those people that has to get the bus home, one of those sort of people that has to get up for work, yeah. going to be disappointed. <laughs> but, you know, what, you know, we've been doing this a long time, so you kind of know how to play it. You know, yeah. first of all, I think you should never be apologetic about doing a new song. I say to the audience, you're big enough and old enough and strong enough to cope with a new song. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not apologising for this. It's fantastic. Good so you. yeah. you've got to measure it. You, yeah, you can't just course. go out and do you know, an hour, half an hour of your sort of, you know, folk classics. You've got to hit them with something they know, then play something they don't know. Yeah, a bit of a mix, isn't it? Yeah, a a but you just got to balance it. So you broke up, back together. Oh, we broke up so many times. Yeah, so many times, yeah. back together. Richard, Richard uh, Burton and Liz Taylor. <laughs> 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 Breaking up, splitting up, getting back together. You said that there'll be a new album before, <clears> but hopefully there's definitely going to be a new yeah, one Yeah, I'm in the studio time. this week, and I have to say I'm very, very excited about this record. Good. It is definitely the best thing we've ever done. But what's the dynamic like now, then, between Well, Roy winds me guys. up by saying things like, why don't you do it more softly like Mick Hucknall? You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I do love Mick Hucknall, but... I no, know, we, but We still. know how to wind each other up. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, we yeah. really do. And I say, play it more like Bobby Crush. <laughs> <laughs> you can actually play. We definitely know how to push each other's buttons, but, um, you know, I think what happens is that you kind of... You have to let people be who they are. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? People yeah. don't change. You have to change the way that you react to them. Right. Do you know what I mean? I think that's true in any relationship. You know, people don't really change. Yeah. No, that is When true. you say that people don't really change, when you... We've got a picture of you when you're oh, I mean, 19. The way we look, yeah, Well, no, no, I don't <laughs> mean the way you look. But just when you... When well, you, I, I mean, thought even... that was an excuse not to have to change my clothes yeah. for, like, a few years. Well, interestingly, George, earlier on, you were talking about your eyes then. When you look into your eyes there as a 19-year-old and you, you've experienced everything you've experienced <laughs> now, would you ever have imagined then that you would be going back and you'd have split up and all the... Everything that's happened to you? Oh, when I look at that picture, I think those eyebrows are on flip. I mean, what is going on? <laughs> I mean, you know. <laughs> They used to they used to get used to be hours those eyebrows. Oh, I like, can they, imagine. They were at a four-hour session, back yeah, ten yeah, yeah. tea, you know. Yeah. You know what? It is so amazing to, you know, because you know, kids now they know what to expect. You've got things like the voice and X Factor, and people know how they can become famous. When we started, no, we were I like, did. maybe we'll make a record, maybe we'll do a tour, yeah. getting on the radio, you yeah. know. And you just didn't know what the possibilities were. Mm. So to be sitting here. 30 odd years later, actually, you know, being able to go out on tour, yeah. you know, to fill out venues, to have an audience is quite mind blowing. Yeah, and exciting. there's a lot more behind the lyrics as well of the songs that you're writing now because of everything that you've been yeah, through. Yeah, well, band I've always, together. you know, for me, all the best music always is always music with context. If you, yeah. you know, like when you're doing The Voice, you know, you've got kids doing Sam Cooke songs or Bob Marley songs, and you've got yeah. to say to them, remember what the political and social Meaning world was, was like yeah, yeah, when yeah. this was written. This isn't, you know, bubblegum. This is passionate music. So, mm. for me, all my favourite artists are always people that kind of pour themselves into what they do. I want to know yeah. who you are when I hear you sing. Yeah. I well, want to know what, your what devils you and said, your deeds. What yeah. you said then about, like, my, my son's just got bass and he started playing bass cat. And this obsession with overnight fame. Yeah. Where you're going... People think you just arrive there. Yeah. And you go, they when do. you play yeah. in the little clubs, when you play into 12 people, when you're doing this, you'll realise whether or not you have a passion for it. Mm. I think if you're going to do it as a kind of long-term career, you've really got to learn to be, you know, a little bit tough-skinned, a mm. mm. little bit optimistic, a little bit passionate. Mm. You know, you just you can't give in, you know. It's funny, though, when it becomes a job, it changes, though, doesn't it? Because music, if it, as, a, as a passion, you're doing it because you love it, and then suddenly all these ex extra influences come in, the commercial side of things and everything, and it changes. I think you're right. right. I mean, I think when I... You know, the idea of having a job when I was 90 was just so abhorrent. It was like, <laughs> a job, a career... I can't work. Uh, <laughs> now, I love the fact that this is my job. Yeah. And I do it to the best of my ability. Yeah. And I actually do think it's a job. When I was 19, it was my life. It was an obsession. Mm. And there was no separation. Whereas now, when I go on stage, I might go to work later than most people, but I'm going to work. Mm. And so I'm going to be the best, <laughs> you know, mm. I can be. Mm. And I want to engage the audience. And I really do kind of enjoy it in a way that yeah. I never did. No. Mm.
No. I love it. And how does a culture club tour in what year are we? 2018 compared to 81? Yoga, kombucha, <laughs> Vajivalat, you know, I mean, that's just for me. For the, re for the rest of them, it's just basically a carb fest, yeah. you know, like John Romani. Well, for, you, for you, though, it's <laughs> your healthy time, isn't it? It's when you well, really... Well, I think for me, going on tour, because you know it's a lot of work. We're doing America, then we're doing the UK, and the UK tour will probably get extended, hopefully, so... You know that it's going to be hard work, and you yeah. can't. When you're 19, you can stay up all night. I'll worry about it tomorrow. Yeah, you still yeah. do that. I know you still do that, but <laughs> I can't get away with that. You know, I'm just not made of that sort of stuff anymore, and I have to sleep. Well, you've got to pull the makeup off first. That takes hours. Well, I'm sure. I don't do that myself. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if, if, if I get 12 hours sleep, I still look the same. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the UK leg of Culture Club's 2018 tour begins in November and you're starting in Nottingham. Yes, and don't forget, we've got more music coming up. Nathaniel Ray